Let's take a look at example three where we have a similar situation to what happened in example two. In this case though, we have two containers containing red balls and gray balls. And in this problem, we're gonna end up using something called Bayes' theorem. That's the theorem that's written on the bottom of the page right there. In order to be able to use the theorem though, let's uh, first of all look at the situation that we're in and define what the events are and what the sample space is and so on and so forth so that we can kind of know what we're looking at. So first of all, we have one urn containing three red balls and four gray balls. The second container has five gray, rather five red and three gray. So this is an illustration to represent what is going on so far. And here's the situation in this problem. We choose a ball by first selecting one of the urns at random then picking a ball from that urn. So first we pick a container randomly, and so it's equally likely that we're gonna pick the first container or the second container. Once we choose the container, we're gonna close our eyes and grab a ball from the inside of that container. And if the chosen ball is red, what is the probability that it came from the first urn? So that's what we are searching for. So let's start by defining some variables so we can kind of put this question in terms of variables that we pick. In this problem, they're talking about red balls. That's what we're choosing. And we are also talking about picking a container or an urn. So the variables that I'm gonna pick are the following ones. I'm going to pick R to represent the event that the chosen ball is red, R for red. U1 will represent the event that the ball came from the first urn. And U2 represents the event that the ball came from the second urn. So far, I know that choosing the urns is equally likely. So, so far I know that probability of U1 equals one half and probability of U2 is also one half. This is because the probability of choosing either container is the same and there are two containers. So if I pick one of them, the probability is gonna be one half versus the other one, which is also one half. Now in the first container, there are three balls that were red out of eight. So some probability is equal to three over eight and the second container has something similar going on where we have five red balls. Sorry, in the first container there were seven balls, not eight. And the second container had five red balls and there were eight in that container. Now, what letters or variables should I write in front of these numbers? So both of these are probabilities. But the first probability represents what? It represents choosing the red ball given that I'm already in the first urn. And the second probability represents the probability of choosing a red ball given that I already am sitting inside of the second container or second urn. So those are the numbers that we're looking for, or those are the numbers that we have so far. Now, what are we searching for in this problem? In this problem, we are searching for the probability that the ball came from the first urn given that the chosen ball is already red. So the question is, what's the probability that the chosen ball is red and that it came from the first urn? So I chose the first urn and it was given that it was already red. So that's what we're looking for. Notice that it's very similar to what we have written up there. The letters are backwards though, and that makes a difference. It's not gonna be three over seven, as you'll see in a few seconds when we finish this video. So in order to proceed forward and figure out what the answer is, I'm gonna have to consult with Bayes' theorem down below. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So it says that the probability of BK slash A is equal to the probability of A slash BK times the probability of BK divided by P A slash B1 times B1 plus A slash B2 times B2 and so on and so forth. What are A, B and whatever in this case? The B1, B2, B3 are supposed to be mutually disjoint events. In my case, the BK is gonna look like the U1. So in my case, the B1, B2, B3, and so on are U1 and U2, meaning the probability of choosing the first urn or the second urn. And in these problems, what is A? A is, for me, the second letter, which is red, meaning the probability of choosing a red ball. So if I wanna know what the P of U1 slash r is, then I would have to do the following. I would have to first write down a fraction. And first of all, the numerator is gonna have pretty much the same variables that I'm interested in, except they're gonna be in opposite order. 
R is going to go first, U1 afterwards, times multiply that by the probability of U1. So in other terms, probability of R, given that U1 is already true, multiplied by the probability of U1. And we already have all those numbers actually in our little diagram. Now, what do we do on the denominator? We divide by all the possible B1s, B2s, B3. In this case, we only have two urns. So we're going to do P R given U1 times the probability of U1 plus the probability of choosing a red ball from the second, given that we're in the second urn, multiplied by the probability of the second urn. And it's pretty straightforward at this point. We're just going to plug in all the numbers and we'll be pretty much set to go. So let's see. The first number that we need is 3 over 7 multiplied by the probability of choosing the first urn. That's 1 half. All divided by, again, the same numbers, 3 over 7 times 1 half because it looks exactly like the one we have on the numerator. Those, those are the same variables, basically. Add to it P of R slash U2. That's 5 over 8 multiplied by the probability of choosing the second urn, which is also one half. And a calculator can be used to determine this number. And I believe the number turns out to be 24 over 59. As a decimal, this is roughly speaking equal to um, 0 0.40 67. So let's say 40.67%.